Hi, I'm Sarah Michael. I'm a consultant psychiatrist at St Vincent's. I work on the inpatient ward and also in the community setting. So schizophrenia is a type of um, serious mental illness. It's a type of psychosis and so it's characterised by symptoms of psychosis, including hallucinations, so maybe hearing or seeing things, delusions, so believing things that aren't real. Um, you can also have disorganised thought or behaviour and that might be when people are speaking but it's not really making a lot of sense or their behaviour is quite disorganised as well and it's typically characterised by functional decline so for at least a six month period um, there's been a change in uh, how people are acting perhaps they're not going to school or to work as much as usual. Sometimes people notice the change in behaviour. You might have someone who's 16 or 17 and uh, really starts to withdraw. Maybe they don't go to school or their grades start to drop. Maybe it's someone who's normally worked for most of their life and then over time they start to drop out of um, employment. For other people it might be more acute. They might start to hear voices. They might start to believe things that aren't based in reality things like experiencing paranoia, believing that people are after them, uh, worrying that their phone or their internet is being hacked. And so they may come to medical attention for one of these reasons. There can be a number of different reasons that over time um, people can develop schizophrenia. Certainly if you go back to the 80s and 90s, um, scientists were trying to find one gene that was responsible and, and they didn't find that. They found that there were multiple genes of varying effect. So for some people there is a genetic risk, maybe it runs in their family, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent or a parent might have it. Uh, then if we move through the lifespan, sometimes people can have really different, difficult experiences in their childhood that might make them more prone to developing schizophrenia, experiencing trauma or other losses. There can also be medical conditions that can make something look like schizophrenia, but normally we check people out when they first get that diagnosis to rule that out as a cause. So we don't tend to use the word um, cured when we're talking about schizophrenia, but we do use the word recovery, which is really important to think about people not just achieving remission from their symptoms, which we're very much able to do, but going on to achieving a full recovery, and that includes achieving a functional recovery, so getting back into school or work, as well as a social recovery, so getting back into their relationships, into meeting people and having those social outlets as well. And so yes, people can achieve remission and recovery from schizophrenia. There's a few different myths around schizophrenia and I think one of the myths is that people don't get better and I think there's a real risk of treatment nihilism and we assume that, that people won't get better from this illness and that's just absolutely not true. We have a number of different medications that can help people but more importantly there are a number of non-medication options that we have to treat people and again people can go on and achieve a really good recovery and lead a really fulfilling life.